I, I kind of want to just talk about the whole, I mean, again, talk about the whole coronavirus, but rather than talking about what, you know, how it's affecting us, I kind of want to, tech, to talk a little bit about the medical side about the coronavirus and kind of talk about the, the pathophysiology of what a virus is, particularly, particularly the coronavirus. So let's first break it down, right? Uh, this is the this is the part that I miss about school. It's just like you learn some cool things, and I, I remember learning about all of this stuff back when I was in you know college and grad school. So let's first talk about like what it is, like what separates like a virus versus a bacteria, right? So if you guys don't remember, um, the way a virus spreads is essentially it it has like this like this shell. I'll, I'll go and find a picture of it. It has like this shell, and what it does is it, it injects its it's pretty much either it's DNA or it's RNA into its cell organism. And what ends up happening is that it mixes in with the cells. Our bodies are very, very good about that. And that's our immune system is one of the most coolest things that you can call it God or the universe or just through evolution has really come up with. It's just the coolest thing. Anyways, so let's go and break it down, all right? So the virus enters your body. So I apologize, the, so viruses are generally RNA um, organisms. So it enters the cell, it injects its uh, material into the host, the, um, the host, into the cell's nucleus where it handles all of the DNA RNA molecules. It mixes in with it and what ends up happening is the cell may eventually start, it'll die, it'll lice or, or it becomes, um, how do you say, it breaks down essentially. The, the cell ends up exploding and now all of a sudden you have more viruses of the material spreading out throughout the body. And that's kind of how the infection ends up spreading, right? And as far as like medications goes, there's not a lot of antiviral medications. Uh, as far as I know, there's only about four, right? And these four medications are, uh, this one's pretty known, it's called Tamiflu. It's primarily for people with the flu, for example. Uh, Relenza, not sure what that is. Rapivav and Sofluza. So this is as of 2019, right? And this is why, you know, I don't recommend or most doctors will not recommend an antibiotic if you have a, a virus. So anyway, let's talk a little bit more about what the coronavirus is. The coronavirus is a, again, it's a virus, but the difference is it's also, viruses generally have a small size, right? In this case, the coronavirus has a micron size of 0 0.1. And so what happens is, it's also a droplet, uh, as far as how it's spread, it's droplet based, meaning like if I were to sneeze, if I were to, you know, cough, any particles that I emit through the floor or through my surfaces, it'll land onto the immediate area. On hard surfaces, the coronavirus can last anywhere from 48 to 72 hours. So for, for, for three days, so if I were to spit, cough, touch something, I am essentially spreading my germs onto the surface and it's gonna last for about 72 hours. And that's considered a, you know, that's why we, we always, we always recommend washing your hands, don't touch anything, um, things like that, okay? So let's say we inhale, this virus goes into our system. What ends up happening is our nose is a good way to filter. That's why we generally re recommend people to always breathe with their nose, right? Because that's what our, our hairs are for, not just to look pretty, but when we inhale um, air molecules, our nose is very good at filtering out these particles, and that's why we have boogers a lot of times. But in this case, the size of the coronavirus is so small that it bypasses through all of our filtration system, and we have what's called the upper, our upper respiratory tract, right? And so our upper respiratory tract is basically from here to here, like from our nose, mouth, up to where about our voice box is, right? And if I remember my anatomy correctly, what ends up happening is the, the coronavirus ends up breaking off into um, both sides of our lungs, right? And we end up what's, we end up getting what's called bilateral interstitial pneumonia, <laughs> fancy. And so we, we, we know how to deal with pneumonia, right? But the problem is, is that in this case, is the coronavirus can cause bilateral interstitial pneumonia. And let's talk a little bit about what that is, okay? So our interstitium is essentially the lining that, that coats basically the outer lung membrane, kind of with the alveolar space. So the pulmonary interstitium is basically a collection of support tissues within the lung that includes the alveolar epithelium, which is the lining essentially, the pulmonary capillary, 
the pulmonary capillary endothelium, which is the inner lining now, the basement membrane, the perivascular, and the perilymphatic tissues, which is essentially all of our blood vessels and the alveolar um, intertwined, right? Everything's kind of in the middle. So what's that, what ends up happening is when, let's say, we get a, we get a pneumonia, we get some type of lung disease, uh, we ingest it, and our body goes through what's called the inflammatory phase. So when it, what ends up happening to our alveoli, which is the uh, fluid-filled, sorry, these are basically the lung-filled sacs in our body that helps us kind of exchange oxygen and all that, that gets swollen, it starts filling up with pus, and when you start having swelling and pus, you have excess fluid inside the lining, and that what, that's what makes breathing so hard, and that's why this can become a real, essentially a, a problematic issue, right? If you're not getting enough oxygen because you're having difficulty breathing, you need to get a respirator, and that's why we have these things in the hospital for people who are just completely, just like their lungs are collapsing because they're just not getting enough of that, essentially air in their system. And so I thought that was that was a I don't say it's pretty cool, but it's always good. It's always just good to kind of learn like how things happen, why things happen, and the best way we could uh, figure it out. So just something I kind of want to share with you today, and just kind of kind of pick our brain about these things so anyways anyways i hope you hope you're doing well i hope you're continuing to stay safe and and just a just a little uh news flash like seattle is currently they have implemented a, a not really a ban but so all the restaurants in seattle are now closed all bars are now closed starbucks is actually closed they only accept takeout or pickup meaning that they've removed all the chairs there's no tables in sight they just completely got everything they got rid of everything uh, restaurants are also just doing takeout as well. I'm not too sure about these smaller establishments. And from what I read last night, so places like McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, anything with a drive-through is still gonna be open. But as far as like going inside, I think most of these stores are gonna be closed. They haven't quite explained how long it's gonna be closed yet, but I'm hoping it's not that long. And I understand that this is, this is a needed measure because we wanna try and contain this virus as much as possible. To, to minimize the risk of spreading. I hope, I hope you stay safe. I'm trying to stay safe as much as I can. I'm getting a little bit of cabin fever right now. And I, the one thing that I really do miss actually is just human contact and just human interaction, like genuine human interaction, right? Not like, hey, how you doing? Are you staying safe? You know, take care of yourself, like real connection, right? I miss shaking people's hands, miss high-fiving people. I just miss giving hugs. I miss, I miss that. You know, I, I, I hope that once all of this is said and done, the first person I'm gonna see, I'm like, I'm gonna give you a hug. It's gonna give you a hug because I miss that human connection. Anyways, continue to stay safe out there and just, you know, take care of yourself, look out for your loved ones, and, and, and above all, just be good to each other. In times of panic, in times of need, in times of just turmoil, the only thing that we could really rely on is just each other. So when all is said and done, let's, let's just continue to be good to each other, okay? See you later.